What is going on, everybody? Poker Dad here. Welcome to a, another video. And in this video here, I am going to be reviewing um, some MTT play, some hands um, that were played deep stack. So by deep stack, I mean um, anything with an M of 20 or higher. Um, so I like using M as opposed to big blinds, just because M gives you a more accurate representative of where you are in a tournament, how big your stack is. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with M, um, basically this is a calculation that will tell you how many um, orbits you have remaining based on your stack. Um, and that's calculated by taking your stack and dividing it by the small blind and the big blind and any antes. Um, or another way that you can actually do it is uh, take your st uh, take your stack and um, divide it by uh, the uh, divided by the big blind and then divide it by 2.25. Um, so I like this much better than uh, using big blinds. So anyway, in, in this video here, we are going to be <clears throat> looking at some hands that I played. Um, I haven't taken a look and see. I haven't looked at these hands at all, so we're going to be winging it. This is a study session for me, and I'm, of course, always happy to be posting these up on YouTube. Um, so without further ado, let's jump into it. I do have Flopzilla open if we need to take a look at Flopzilla as well. Uh, so here right now, we, we can see that we are in the 50-100 blind level in this particular tournament. Um, don't know that, like what tournaments these are either. These are just, um, I just pulled these up from the database and using hand review. So we're in a small blind here with H-Jack suited. And by the way, uh, I should tell you before each uh, hand, I can say that our M is 38. And those for you who still want to see big blinds, you can see here uh, the big blind is 57. So pretty deep. And we get an open, uh, an open raise here from a player uh, who we only have 21 hands on. So pretty, it's pretty early to say what kind of player type they are, but they kind of look reggish. And that's very important to know what kind of player type we're playing versus. And looks like we get a, a three bet here from another play. We don't have many hands on yet. Looks like he's been playing a lot of hands though, but it's still very early. And we decide, so I don't like this play here. Now I will say that I, I played this hand before I started studying MTTs, but I think it's important to look at these types of hands here. Um, here I, I four bet, but I don't four bet jam. Um, I don't really think this is a great play here. Um, in fact, you can make the argument for for folding here, or at least or calling. Um, either way, I just don't really like the play here. Um, when this guy three bets, and he three bet three bet jam, he was really short. He has an M of seven, um, but he's not like actually seven isn't like super short. Super short is like M six or lower, but he's on the cusp. Um, this player has M of fourteen, which is kind of like in the middle, um, because there's like a middle stack. Um, this doesn't really make much sense. If I'm going to do this, I should just be jamming here. And I don't think it really makes much sense. We can call, I think, which is fine. Um, but I don't like the I don't like this raise here. It doesn't really make much sense for betting here. And our opponent, of course, now raises, puts himself all in. And I'm just kind of in a spot that I can't really get out of way, get away from the hand. But, I mean, either way, I just don't like it. It's under the gun open. This guy three bets versus the under the gun. I should probably just fold out this ace jack. So I definitely didn't like how it was played. Uh, pocket aces here. So really no wrong way to play these, um, except for limping or something like that. Here we have a player who opens up. First of all, uh, we should always take a look at what RM is. RM is 31, so we have big, 46 big blinds. Uh, our opponent here open limps. Uh, we got 26 hands on him. So again, not not so much. Uh, he's got an MS-74, so he's he's really deep, this guy. So we get some limps. Uh, then we get a isolation raise here uh, from a player who is also deep with uh, 58M, 86 big blinds. So obviously we want to see our three bet here. Uh, we don't have to jam or anything like that. We are. This is a great thing about being so deep here. Uh, sometimes it may seem like maybe a jam is the right play here, but we're really deep. We can actually just legitimately three bet this here, bump this up about 4X. Um, so I think here like 275 times four. Uh, we can make it 1100. Yeah, sure. We're going to be committed to this pot, um, but that's fine. Let's just three bet here. Obviously, we get jam. We can call, um, but we're going to be committed on, on on the flop. But that's fine, just to get the money in now instead of, instead of jamming and possibly not getting a call. 
Uh, so that's exactly what I do. And then we get this limp raise. Now, obviously, we have we have uh, aces. The limp jam is always very fishy. Um, usually means kings, aces, ace, king, something like that. Luckily here, though, we have the pocket aces, so we're not worried about it. In fact, we're very happy to see this jam come in. This guy decides to come along, so this makes it not as great, but we're never going anywhere here. Um, obviously, multi-way is much better for uh, five-card hands than it is for a hand like pocket aces, but obviously, we're just getting it all in. And we can see our opponent had uh, ace-king, and they end up getting a... F they end up... Uh... <sighs> Did they... Uh... Kings and two fives. So we end up... We end up... Um... I, I, I basically end up winning, but he ends up getting the side pot versus queens. I was having some of my coffee. Sorry for that terrible sound. Pocket Kings here. Here we're playing six-handed. Uh, we have an M of 43, which is 65 big blinds. And we get an open raise here from the cutoff. Uh, we have 61 hands on this player so far. He can see uh, he is pretty loose and kind of aggressive as well, 54-19. So we're going to say he's kind of an aggressive player, at least pre-flop. Post-flop, not so much yet, with an aggression factor of 1. But he open raises it here. He's got an M at 31, so he's deep as well. And we get a, a min 3-bet here from the small blind, which is really interesting, kind of weak. Um, this player is a pretty aggressive player as well. And I think here we have an M of 43. Um, we don't have to, again, we don't have to jam here. We can we can really just four bet this here. Um, I'm okay even making this like 450. Doesn't have to be huge. That's what I do. I make it 450 here. And we get a call. And I'm sure this guy should call too. He does. And we go multi-way. Um, so not the best fought multi-way, but like considering these guys' ranges, this guy's opening range, um... I mean, just to get an idea of like what this guy's opening range is going to look like if he has like a PFR in 19, which is, of course, not going to be super accurate. But if we say give him a PFR of 19, and let's say he'll, he would keep in all these hands here because with it being a multi way he could definitely f like five at jam some of these hands here. But considering we're all so deep, like this is what his, this is what his range looks like, right? And when we think about the small blind player who, uh, three bets here. Now he only had two, three, three, but let's just say he only had like two, three bets. So let's say like his range maybe looks like like this stuff here in the small blind. They wouldn't even have ace, ten, or ace, jack, I don't think. Maybe have like these types of hands here. Maybe even doing this with a bunch of suited aces. You know, clearly, if we give him something like this here. This flop really isn't connecting with anybody here. So I think this is actually kind of a good thing because we should have the best hand here unless we're coming up uh, coming up against somebody who has pocket aces. So it checks here. I think that I really need to throw out a C-bet here on this board. Um, we Obviously, it's not the best board in terms of if we could be up against some flush roads, which is always possible because it is possible one of these two players does have um, a suited ace with uh, ace of spades. Um, suited aces, so that is a possibility. We definitely need to bet here, um, and I think the proper bet here. Let's see, we have twenty-eight. We have twenty-eight ten. So I mean, the SPR here. This guy is uh, SPR less than one. Here we have an SPR, um, an SPR of about. Uh, that's actually less than one also, and we are like a little bit over. So the SPR here is really when we take the effective stack, is less than one. Um, <clears throat> so, I mean, should I bet here or should I jam? Should I bet here for like a quarter pot, keep it small, or jam? Well, I think if I bet for a quarter pot here, I'm giving these two guys like way too good of a price to draw. Um, obviously, I don't expect to be called by better here. Um, but I would like to at least get those draws to commit and push all their chips into the pot. Now, could we get sucked out on? Absolutely. Now, the good news is we do have a king of spades. Um, so that cancels out any ace king of spades. Uh, could be looking at some ace queen of spades, ace jack of spades, hands like that. 
Uh, but I think really, given the, given the pot size, because it's so inf inflated, because of the fact that um, it was four bet here and we're multi-way, um, I think a jam is really the best play here. So let's see what I did. And I did jam, so that's good. And we get a call. And uh, we take it down. So this player here had six, had six eight. So he actually called the jam uh, with an open ended trade draw. Um, no, it actually would have. I'm sorry, with a gut shot. So pretty, pretty bad call here. And in fact, when you think about preflop, um, he really should never even been in his hand to begin with. So this guy definitely cost himself a lot of chips playing pretty poorly. He opened up eight six. He opened up eight six offsuit from the cutoff, and he calls a a, a four bet here. Um, so not the best play from him, but good for us because we take down a pot. Pocket nines here in the button. We're sitting here with 28M. And we get an open raise here from the cutoff. Player we have 39 hands on so far. He seems to be, um, uh, I think it's the same player we just played. We actually just played here. So it's the same player we just looked at before. Uh, we decided to call here. I mean, we can call or we can three bet here. Uh, either way, you know, we're going to be in position. Um, it's, it's kind of interesting. When we have 28M, I mean, I guess it, it could really go either way here, but we decide to call. I like to see myself get a little bit more aggressive maybe in these spots, especially versus a player who's playing a lot of hands. But the good news is, you know, he's definitely a recreational player. We're going to get to play him in position. And we get a call, unfortunately, and that's that's this is one of the reasons why I don't mind a three bet, just to kind of get the 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 uh, the big blind player out of there. But it's okay. This big blind player, by the way, is a pretty loose aggressive. I don't know if this is the same play we just played that we busted out. Maybe he rebought. Uh, it's definitely the same tournament, of course. Uh, we fought pretty damn good though with the full house. So um, obviously, we're going to be looking to begin aggressive here. Just again, looking at stacks here. Now, this is a much different situation because there's only 475 in the middle. So this isn't a low SPR s situation. So. Let's take a look here. We get a couple. Of, this guy actually ends up donk leading. Um, so this is interesting. He he opened raise. He's got a, a just take a look at what his range would look like if we just punched in twenty six percent, which obviously is very very premature, but it just gives us a general like a general idea, right? Um, so let's see. He's opening up a range like this, which just seems okay for for a cutoff definitely anyway um so this particular board here of nine nine of diamonds seven of diamonds seven of diamonds so yeah i mean there are definitely some nines here nine eight ten nine all these nines here that he could have um not too many sevens just a pair of sevens you know put the pocket sevens which would give him uh which would give him a full house as well which would be pretty crazy it'd be quite the cooler for him eight seven suited seven six suited um so he's, he's, he's got some some connectivity to this range. Not a huge amount of connectivity, but he does. You know, on this board here, 9779 seven, nine diamonds, 7 of diamonds, and uh, 7 of spades here. So look at, look at his connectivity to this board um, and, what he, and what he could possibly have here. 9% um, of his range is over pairs. Uh, top pairs, he's got 19% of his range. So... Good connectivity there. Uh, it's like what about twenty eight percent of his range um, is over pair at top pair, which is good. Um, in terms of draws, he doesn't have many draws here. Um, only five percent of his range is flush draws. So we think maybe he's betting with top pair. Top pair are better most of the time here. Um, so the question is like, do we call or do we raise here? Well, I think that. Like is top pair ever is top pair ever folding versus a raise here? Um, I don't think so. Like a nine is never folding here. Um, three of a kind, which I mean, he doesn't have many three. Of a, he doesn't have many combos of three of a kind. He's got seven, six, eight, seven, and eight and eight seven. But obviously, those are never folding here. Um, none of his over pairs tens through aces. Right, just to show you guys. Um, here is top pair hands. So. Like none of these are ever folding, I don't think. I don't think so. I, I think they would stay. And this guy's kind of a loose player. He's not passive, um, so I don't think any of these nines are folding here. 
Uh, obviously, the over pairs, they're never folding here. To a, you know, obviously nothing else here is 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 folding. So I think we we can definitely get some value out of him because of because of how hard he hits this board. Uh, we just call though. So yeah, I think we missed. An, I think we definitely missed an opportunity for value here by by not raising uh, because of the amount of hands that would definitely continue here. We do get a call from this guy though, um, so that's kind of good, I guess. Uh, we do get this guy to come along. And an 8 comes out now. So 8's actually really, really great for us uh, because we are going to get a lot of continuing, especially now from, from this guy who really could be calling at a big point with a ridiculously big range. Um, and 8's are going to hit him well. Um, we got some more draws out there for these guys to chase with our full house. So I think this is really great. But again, I think we missed, an opportun we missed the opportunity here. I think it's going to be harder to get action here um, by any kind of raise. Now, this guy donks out for a min bet. I think now, like we, Jeff, we just have to raise here. We do. I feel like we're just missing. I feel like we're just missing so much value here. Uh, the pot here, we have seventeen eighty five. There's ten seventy five in the middle here. Um, I mean, uh, we do get calls from all three guys now. Let's see. And now we have like a pot size. We have a pot, about a pot size bet here, a little bit over a pot size bet left. Um, the three coming out doesn't really change anything. So with these bets here, like I feel like we we're, we're just we're just jamming here because there's no reason not to jam in this spot at this point. Um, like what hands are going to call us if we if if we jam this? We're going to get we're going to get a seven to call. There's no way that a seven is folding, and like I think that's what we're really targeting. I think this guy more so than this guy is going to have the sevens now at this point. Um, many different combinations of sevens that that might be leading out too. So I really would like to see myself jam here. And if we don't get a call, we don't get a call. But I really feel like the opportunity missed was on the flop. That we're definitely getting calls on the flop from any seven. And I don't jam. I just bet um, bet half pot. Leaving this is I don't I don't really like this at all. I just rather jam. Uh, they're going to call or they're not going to call. And they fold. I think we definitely missed the value though here. On the flop by not raising on the flop. I uh, got some pocket fives here now. So our M here is 37. And we get an open limp here from definitely a passive player. Kind of tight passive. He's 134 hands. He's a 25. So I mean he's not really he's not loose. I'm more of like a tight passive player, open limping. Uh, we decide to limp behind, which is fine. We have an M of 37. I think this is perfectly fine. We don't have to isolate fives. See a free flop and just try and get a set. And we don't get a set. So we have we have here um, uh, we have here a uh, second pair. So we go check, check. It's an interesting spot here. We could bet just to steal the pot now um, because we at least do have pocket fives or we can just see a free turn. Our hand is going to be pretty vulnerable, so this might be one of the best opportunities for us to take down the pot. Uh, it's kind of unlikely that we have any aces, though, but it's also kind of unlikely that any of our opponents have aces um, because it's if one of them had an ace, first of all, there's only two more aces left. Um, and... Even like the recreational players, for the most part, are going to uh, bet their aces pre-flop. The other thing is, you would think that one of these two would have bet an ace. So, our fives definitely could still be behind. These guys could have a pair of sixes, pair of sevens, something like that. Um, I think a bet here doesn't have to be a big bet. We can make it even just like a third, a third uh, pot size bet um, to see if we can just take down the pot here. Um, I don't. I check. And I think checking is fine, too. I don't think you need to bet here. Uh, but I think it is a play that you can do to take down the pot. Um, take down the pot right now. But I do check. And another ace comes out. So now anybody with a pair has a has a full house unless somebody's sitting here with quads. And this guy puts out a bet here. And we can never fold our fives here. So we got a call. I mean, he could have pair of sixes, pair of sevens, pair of eights, any pair that, that, that beats us. But we have to call it. And a queen comes out and should just go check, check here. Um, 
Yeah, I don't see much value in betting here because I don't really ever expect to get, get called by worse. Um, so I think we just got to check back our fives here. And I do. And yeah, he has nines, which obviously would have called us and we would have been beat. Uh, here we have ace two suited. So this will be the last hand that we look at for the video. I'm trying. I'm trying to keep these videos a little bit shorter than uh, than I usually do, um, just because you know I, I know that long videos people you know, people get disinterested after a while. So this is going to be the last hand of the of the video. And it looks like it's going to be blind versus blind. So we have 67m, and our opponent has 67m. This might be towards the beginning of a what twenty minutes at the 15:30 level. Which obviously this is when you're going to be deep stacked the most, of course. Anyway, uh, we get a three X open from our opponent. Uh, we don't have really any hands on him yet, so we don't really know much about him. Uh, Ace two suited. Um, I think I'm perfectly fine calling here. We could also three bet as well. Um, without having much information on our opponent, I'm perfectly fine just calling this here. And we get a pretty decent flop here with the with the nut flush draw. So our, our opponent bets pot into us. So this is an interesting spot. Um, one I think that we should take a look at um, in terms of just make sure we, that we have the right odds to call this here. Now, we definitely do have the implied odds. Um, and I think that's important to keep uh, to keep in mind. In fact, actually, let me open up my... I don't think I have it handy now to calculate the implied odds. But just, just to give an idea... Either way, I'm pretty sure we even still have, like, we have decent pot odds here. Let's just say, hypothetically, this opponent from the small blind, we don't have much on him, is going to be opening like all this type of stuff here, all these suited hands. All these aces. A bunch of these kings. Which would be kind of normal. This would be like a normal opening from a small blind. Can even open up this stuff here. You can open up like even all your kings and things like that, right? We have ace two suited, and the board was uh, eight of diamonds, ten of spades, and then five of spades. So, I mean, as you can see. Here, regardless, we have um, 60% equity. Now, on this board here, let's just figure out what he might be betting with here. Uh, he's going to be betting sets, two pairs, over pairs, top pairs. Uh, will he be a pocket pair below top pair? A uh, pair of nines here. Um, it's questionable if he will or not. Um, I don't think it would make much sense for him to do something like that middle of it, all that stuff. Uh, definitely he could be betting his flush draws like this, his open and his straight draws uh, like this. Um, his cut shots, I'm going to say no. I mean, he could, definitely. We don't know much about our opponent, so we don't know at what frequency he see bets at. I mean, right now, we're only at a, only at a 27% um, 27 that he's betting here. Just because like, he's also... There's, he, obviously, he has so many hands in his range here. Look at all these no-man hands. 41% of his uh, range is no-man hands um, out of position. So let's say even if we give him like a continuing range like this, we still have 52% equity, which makes this a very easy call. The question is, can we raise here? I don't think we want to raise because it's a pot size bet. Um, a raise is going to almost like commit us here if he does happen to call and it's, then we're going to have to pull off like a triple arrow bluff um, early on blind versus blind versus a player we don't know much information about so I think calling this here is probably the best play here and that's what we do and a six comes out so not helpful to us of course our opponent now bets half pot so now we're getting even better odds to call so let's, let's take a look at this one again here and Let's see. So it was a six of clubs. So let's see. He could have some straights here that have now hit. And this is interesting. So he could have some straights, right? And also now he's betting half pot because almost like he's trying to get us a call with our flush draws. So straights very possible here. 
sets are very possible here. Two pair is very possible here. Let's see. The sets, by the way, has got tens, eights, and fives. Um, 10, 8, 10, 6, 10, 5, 8, 6, 8, 5. He's got a bunch of potential two pair hands. Uh, his over pairs as well. And his, his top pair hands. I don't expect him again to come up to to be double barreling with any of this other stuff here, and I, I honestly, the flush draw is the flush draw. I guess is interesting, but we block the flush draw too, which makes it so less likely that that he has a, that he's also on a flush draw as well. Let's say hypothetically that he's not doing this with a flush draw, that he's doing this pretty much for value. That puts our equity still at 32%. No, I'm sorry. I got to update this. It puts our equity at 23%. This is interesting because we call and another spade comes out. Are we ever getting paid for it? Well, we're, I mean, we're right around. We have 23% equity and he... But the question is like, is there any implied odds here? Are we ever getting paid off if we hit our flush? And this is a very, very close and interesting spot. This is a really interesting spot. Well, let's see what we do here. I, I'm assuming we call. We do call. Yeah, I think the I think the one issue with this call here is I don't think we're getting paid off if we hit our flush. Um, what we'll be hoping for is that he bluffs and we get paid off here. It's very, very close. I mean, he gives us a perfect price to call um, if he is betting for value, which I think he is betting for value here. Um, so this is a really interesting, definitely a very interesting spot because I don't think we have the implied odds here because I don't think we're ever getting called if we hit our flush. And we don't hit our flush. And uh, he bets pot again. So, yeah, obviously we're gonna we have to fold this up. I, I, I wish we knew what he had. Um, th that was definitely a very interesting hand to to finish it off. I think you can make the definitely make the argument though. Like if we use like the go back to the turn here. Um, if we use the the two four rule, we have um, two times four is eighteen percent. With little to, to no, I, again, I don't think we're getting paid off for a flush here. So I just, yeah, I think I think actually we need to fold this here. Sometimes, I think sometimes we fall into a trap where we're like, all right, well, we have the nut flush draw. But we always got to ask ourselves, if we do hit, will we get paid? So really to, to we really want to see like a third size pot bet here to be able to call. Um, I think a half pot bet here. We got to let these types of hands go, and I do think this is this was a mistake, and I think it's a mistake that a lot of people fall into uh, when they have a uh, an ace high flush draw. Is they want to like they really want to see if they get it. The problem is when you get it, if you're not going to get paid for it, well then what's the point of calling? So I think this was actually a bad call. Yeah. So anyway, guys, I really appreciate you guys checking out this video. Uh, I always appreciate you guys' support here on YouTube. Uh, do me a favor. Um, I stream, Come check out my Twitch stream. I stream uh, four days a week. Uh, it's at www.twitch.tv slash PokerDad2878. Also, if you haven't already, uh, definitely follow me on Twitter at PokerDad28. And also feel free to join my Discord as well. I'm going to leave the Discord um, link in the video, in the uh, comments of this video here. So anyway, guys, I appreciate you checking out the video as always. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And until next time, PokerDad, 